サムがいいか今度はバンクサムがいいかサムが逃げるダッチチャージャーをおーおーそれに誰もが金村が入る入る入って入った入ったーすごい Your original competition car the actual one that you're most known for That's the car you brought to America. You were the first person from first this side Irish, of the. Yeah, I'd say so to bring yeah, something. Yeah, first European. They thought first... I was Mexican, actually. When I really? <laughs> they thought I was Mexican, and then uh, I was too white to be Mexican, obviously. So <laughs> they kind of had to be explained at the time. But yeah, that's the first one. That was a genuine Irish car, or UK car, whatever you want to call it. Red over black Corolla. I bought it when I was 16. It's part of me at this stage, but it just kind of sits there waiting to be taken down and brought back to life. But the plan would be to put it back into that purple that we had originally with the red kind of flamey things on yeah. it and uh, put all the original livery on it, put an SR on it and just, I don't know, put it back. Put it back to the way it was. Back, you know, maybe when I get old. I think it's great that you still have it. Like, I mean, obviously it means a lot to you and like that's mm. gotten you so far. Like started everything. We built that, we finished it in 2005 just for when the D1 guys, Namura and I forget who else came over. I think Kazama came over to uh, Mandela. And we debuted it there and of course, just like any other thing, it was all night, every night trying to get it there and we yeah. got it there and it gave a couple of problems first day out, but it, it was the first real, I think, Irish purpose-built drift car. Yeah. It definitely was. Everything in before that were just kind of like imported stuff imported, that had a few yeah. little bits, but... Import something yeah, and, and just go straight out on track. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. probably the first thing that, it's like, right, let's actually build a car for Irish competition. And then I came from a motorsport background anyway, my dad always raced and still races. So we had decent knowledge and I was just lucky I got hooked on drifting, I guess. I actually sat down, took a whole car apart and built it from the ground up. And it was the first SR20 and, you know, we did the first, like, big axle conversion other than this and then it. And I had to, I did my best to try and keep that a secret because I was buying axles yeah. for, like, 50 quid. <laughs> yeah, I know you can't even quid. fucking get them. They're yeah. like a grand now. Yeah, like. That's the end of it. I had that on the road and my brother had a 300ZX twin turbo and... We bought um, a load of drifting Gaku DVDs from the early event. We got them and we ju they just looked cool. Do you know, we didn't know what the fuck was on it. Just played them and it was like, these guys are doing this in the same car that I have outside the window. I was like, this is amazing. Because so, yeah. we used to be, you know, going to rallies and stuff and doing a few donuts. I mean, once you once you start doing third, fourth gear power slides around the designated course, you, you stop going around in circles fairly Yeah, quickly. the donut thing that <laughs> Ireland's obsessed with. Yeah. Like, I mean, once you, once you get a bit of power and something that can, like, you know, a proper kind of yeah. race car that responds to you and stuff, going around in circles <coughs> becomes a little bit boring at that stage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's stood me well, that car. Formula Drift Stickers from 2007. It was rookie of the year. And it's got the tech inspection stickers, it's got the Projift tech inspection stickers yeah. on the cage, it's still got the Projift door cards and my name. And from 2007, we brought it back and did the European and Irish series in it, as well as Formula D at yeah. the same time. It just seen it in like Orendale and stuff, and you're like, that car was built in a shed in Cork in Ireland, and now it's center stage up against the big boys. Oh, and I mean, just to go over, it was amazing to get to Orendale. It was D1 shipped one way, <laughs> so you had no way home. And I'd never been to America in my life. And uh, we ended up going over and it was like, Jesus, they, they, I remember to this day, I was sitting down playing the PlayStation, must have been PlayStation 2. Yeah. And I got a phone call and, and like the, the number was the hold into the, the phone. And I answered it and it was a guy from Japan from Option. And he was Fuck. like, are you going to Orendale? And I was like, no. And he's like, do you want to go? And I was like, yes. And he's like, okay, we'll be in touch and we'll ship our car over. And that was it. One way ticket. Take it or leave it. Pulled into... Orwindale and it was sitting there with the pallet we sent over with it and we had a toolbox in the pallet and that was Fuck. it. 18 wheeler trucks and Falcon were there with two or three of them and Hankook were there. Great setups and things like that and we just arrived on and like if we blew the engine first day I mean the car was there and we were going home and what would we have done? I was sponsored by Hankook at the time in Ireland and um, they had arranged for Hankook USA to give us tyres and then when we got there no no we have our own drivers. So that was the end of that. A friend of mine, Butsy Butler, you might know him, he had been there the year before watching and he had made friends with, I think, Vaughan Gittin Jr. actually. Vaughan Gittin Jr. actually brought us over to Falcon and, and told him we needed tyres and we actually bought 16 tyres off of Falcon. So it was all the money I had, all the money my mom had and all the money my dad had and 
we gave every single penny we had for 16 tires for the weekend. Uh, actually, then the, the guy, he just started for Falcon, so he was at the bottom of the ladder and he had to go back to the warehouse at like 11 p.m. at night and load 16 tires for some unknown Irish guy. And he actually ended up being the head of the team three or four wow. months later, climbed the whole ladder, and he's like, I'll never forget you made me go back. <laughs> <laughs> and we signed for Falcon then afterwards, but we beat all the American guys and we beat the Japanese guys. Yeah, I remember. Just like the ultimate underdog story, like, you know. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. So, Just seeing you up against the big cars. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just him Most iconic. I just, oh man, I don't know. I just, that clip got me and more. every lap we just come in and like, Weo was my hero. Like he was the whole reason. We got a DVD with him in it and I was like, this guy is just amazing in a Corolla. He was my hero in the thing and, and uh, so he was there and like every time we came back and we started doing more runs and we qualified high and, and everything, you know, we were going, we yeah, were actually yeah. going well, like, and it actually rained one evening, I think, and I think the, the American boys had never seen rain, <laughs> and I think they had no wipers or nothing, and we were like, oh, happy days, it's raining. You know? <laughs> yeah, just so normal. I was like, I can do the whole bank now with like 220 <laughs> horsepower, you know? But every time we came in, there was more and more D1 guys, and they were clapping, like, yeah. I was like, this is just surreal. And then by the end of it, like, they were everything, and the Moore ran the Irish flag on his car after he knocked me out, and he yeah. won the second day. And I went one more time against him and, ah, you know, it's just like, you yeah. watch so many D1 DVDs. And next thing, right, I'm against him. Now I have to put yeah. my socks up and do this. And we had a lot of luck, but when it came to leaving the line, we did it when we left the line. And yeah, we ended up signing for Falcon. I spent eight years in America driving for them. Yeah, it was amazing, yeah. Myself and Wayo oh, kept yeah. in touch over the years. And, you know, it's cool. Live the absolute dream. Amazing, yeah. And so many of them, they were all so nice, like all the drivers, the D1 guys in there. They were just cool. It was just an amazing kind of time. The golden years of drifting. Yeah, D1 is whatever now. I can't even, I don't watch no. it anymore. It's gone to computer judge. Like they had D1 UK, which the Japanese guys were kind of involved in promoting and, and the top three guys were supposed to get their cars sent to Urbandale. And then D1, like it's, you know, we all loved it and everything, but behind the scenes, the, the hierarchy and everything, yeah. there's some politics in it. It's awful. Like, I mean, to give you an example, like I went over, did that, and then they were starting D1 USA, and they were like, oh, you leave your cat here and do USA. I was like, yeah, no about it, but where am I going to live and how am I going to go? Do you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next thing, then Falcon were like, we want you to do Formula D, and they're like, here's a contract with a wage, and I'm like, no brainer. 19 yeah. years of age, dream fucking to race cars, like, absolute no brainer. D1 were like, oh no, we want you to do D1. I was like, okay, you want to, I'll do D1. What, what are you going to do? I was like, nothing. I was like, well then, you don't leave me much opportunity. But then, just to tell you the bullshit, then I came back to Orendale the next year and uh, the D1 competition and they wouldn't leave me in to watch. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> they wouldn't leave me in to watch because I didn't do D1 for the year. I was like, you can't do that. Like, and Whoa. It just tells you the kind of the politics. Got a shipping quotation document. I couldn't get that off them. So the car couldn't come home and then it was delayed. So there was fines. and They wouldn't give it to me. And I'm like, Dude, this is... Falcon had to come out and kind of escort me into... It was fun. It was Wow. Fun. Looking back, but... I'm, I'd imagine it's probably still the same. You have the Black Limited. So I managed to get a hold of one of them. Of course, not a dream car. It's genuine, and I couldn't believe that it was genuine, but I sent the chassis number over to Japan to a friend of mine, and he checked it all out, and I was like, all right, I'm buying it. Because at the end of the day, like, you started off as... You know, like a proper 8.6 head and it's gotten yeah, you this far. Like all of this stemmed from your yeah, just love for... That was the right time, yeah. the right place. and We were lucky that way, you know. But, you know, we built a really good car back when no one had anything, you know. And I guess when the opportunity arose, when we left the line against Nomura and stuff, we kind of did the business and got, got seen. You know? We were the first Irish guy, I guess. And all the Irish guys now, even they find it so much easier to get sponsorship and everything. It's so... It's so known back when I was doing it at the very start. It was just, who are you? Amazing memories. Yeah, good memories. Yeah. What are you going to do then with this black limit? Are you just, it's just a nice little jewel to have. It's... Know, it's nice to look up and see it making more money every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like something like this or whatever. Yeah. It's appreciating a way. The black limit is the, 
To finish off the 8.6 uh, series, they did a limited edition, 400 black limited. Holy Grail, Cal. Yeah, it's literally the Holy Grail of A86s. It's true no only, it's yeah. 205 black, which is a common color here, but uh, Corolla was never sold in 205 black in, in Japan. So that makes it a little bit more special. I know it's just a set of seats and a set of clocks and a stripe and things like that. It, you never got a black Corolla in, in Japan. There's, yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff there for us. I don't know. Look. You might get around to it. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Better nick than your one, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really at all. Mine looks more like the one on the lift down there. I think the one on the left is in the same nick as your one. Really? The one on the right is cool. Yeah. But this thing is like this thing has hit every wall in America, yeah. Ireland, England. It's wrecked. But it looks great. But Even as it's just a shell, like the Falcon Library is quite a nice thing on the eyes. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it will be cool to, if you do get around to putting it back to just that iconic. Yeah, it's a shame to take the Falcon. I know, yeah, with all the actual history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, they're nice panels to hang up in the wall. The 2005 look like is more mine. Since I was a kid, I wanted a Ford Imperial Blue, which is like an Escort Cosmo color. Right. Yeah. I wanted my race car that color. I had like all Fiat's that I used for race, oval racing. And yeah. Stuff. Fiat 127 and shit like that and they were blue and purple yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, and I was yeah, like yeah and then we continued with the purple up until group D has gone uh, it's gone yellow now yeah we continued with the purple for a long time and actually my dad had purple race cars yeah a bit of history everywhere but we changed to the yellow now because I wanted more I wanted uh, I think the 240 looks like on track it looks yeah it'll know. just fucking stand out yeah. there's the season these came with Apex stitched in orange on the seat. They also came with a orange kind of dial cluster setup. Yeah, and same for the heater. Orange for the heaters as well. And, and this has uh, got a uh, gnarly wheel instead of the original. Yeah. The original is horrible. Yeah, so it's kind of ready. Everything's there for the well, time. Yeah, it does a fucking, does about five or six, four inches outside the container. And it's like a ball together. the period fucking falcon stickles so what this is a previa or is it an estimate they're the same yeah, same thing. yeah. the no, wheels are quite gangster on it as well i just got the wheels recently actually yeah it looks fucking it's cool it's full yeah. coilovers and all i got for it like it's 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 pretty legit now is it open or yeah. wished ah. key and all inside it look there's yeah. nothing robbed down here lads you're from probably an awful place so the, the obligatory irish tuning shop with a gs3 yeah yeah engine, Let's not forget the most common wheel from the mid millennium were uh, yeah, Wolf Race Katanas. Every every person. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> this is. It's uh, Sultan's yeah. Corolla, the one we spoke about a little yeah. bit earlier. So we did a quick yeah, three so day, four day left in drive composure. Most of it of V8 and do it kind of sexy, sexy, all new shit. Yeah. But uh, he wants to put like a standard LS2 and then just a dog box and a quick change and just make it bulletproof and just something you can, hey, does an event on this weekend, fire up the crawler and yeah. it just goes, you know? Isn't it great? Like, there isn't many other chassis out there. Like, this is still a car that can be can used competitively and like it's, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, how old are Like, 1983 they brought them out. Nice little K10. He used to do hot rod and stuff, though. Is that yeah, what it was originally? Battles, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's the spear. Oh, yeah, for the Alpina in the front. Daily. And well like the softest I go with them would be like four clicks from soft. Right. Okay, it's okay. I don't even know if I've ever seen one of these. <laughs> there's a ball of like headlight blanks and taillight blanks. Yeah. There's the quattro doors. Sylvia front that we did the cool kind of. It's mad on camera like they just it just looks real. And back and, oh, there's the the Falcon. No way. Back bumper. There's a spare dash from my car. There's the group V. Quattro wing, group V quattro quarter. There's the Special spark of seats for the quattro, the drifting ones there. There's a Corolla door. One does a fancy FC front bumper there for someone. Huh? There's a front bumper there, a weird one from Japan. You'd love that kind of shit, no? <laughs> yeah. well, Are we that bad? Like? There might even be a fucking stick or a jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TBO fucking Oh, thing. TBO. It's a TBO. Oh. oh. No ASMR video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. just have the mic on it. <sighs> Flicking and <Yeah. laughs> whispering. <and laughs> <laughs> Right, this is your shot. Yes. For your car. Famous AVO MCN originally, or AVO D Mac, or whatever you want to call it. Right. Pop that in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
up in your spring, in your top, back down the shock, and you're done. It's an oil shock, so you know we get the question a lot. Oh, how come it isn't correcting itself? You know, it's an oil shock. Yeah. So it's not gas. A yeah, gas, yeah. gas shock will correct itself. But a lot, a lot of the old motorsport shocks are oil. You know? Yeah. Still the same valving and stuff, but. Your adjustments on the bottom are a little locking collar. Yeah. Uh, 1.9 ID spring, which is the real secret of these, which can fit into the Corolla nicely. And uh, yeah, because you have so many problems trying to get the bigger spring into the bag. It has this little false top here and the double poly bush and then the perfect bush for the bottom that goes yeah. over the axle. And these are way better than the old, you know, the rubber from each side. Men are everywhere in the world, like we've even sent them into Japan, which is a great compliment for us. We have people driving around the street in Japan and saying, Jesus, they're really nice. And yeah, so we kind of, something I developed myself back in the day. We did a lot with, with stuff and a lot with, um, with TRD shocks, which were the go-to. When, when I had a Corolla, there was no aftermarket support in this country and yeah. things like that. And I imported a lot from Japan and the TRDs were beautiful, but they were just to have the gate. And then if you want to lower it, you need to fucking cut springs and stuff because yeah, they're not adjustable. We needed a true coilover for what we were doing and we'd always, you know, as they got more popular, we'd have a crawl on 13s, a crawl on 17s, a crawl on Yeah, exactly, 14s. yeah, yeah. We, uh, we made the coilover system, we made it work and we tested it for, for a good while and, you know, there was obviously the concern and there still is from people putting the spring and the shock on one point. When you see the way the Corolla is done, the way that patch is tacked into the floor, it comes into the where the, the big four inch spring goes yeah. up from the axle, it's all one piece and if it wants to put it up through the floor it has to shove the whole thing. If it does come up through the floor in your car, well then your car is a bucket of crap. <laughs> it's just going to come up anyway. Yeah. Never had a bother with them and geez, we've had them in competition cars with 18 by 10s on the back, jumping them and doing yeah. all sorts of things. That's a great product. It's so nice that just again, you know, yeah. we're just down here in yeah. Cork and you just des developed a custom yeah. rear coilover shock for the 8.6 and it just goes to show how much of a following and a love Ireland has for the 8.6 that you know a rear coilover setup like that was designed and developed in Ireland. Yeah developed in Cork Yeah, we did it through years of drifting and racing and stuff so it's cool and it's you know it's nice for Irish people to buy Irish. Yeah it's all I've heard is good things and yeah I'm very excited to run yeah, these in the back of the car. Yeah what you think. Love to see how you get on and if you ever finish your camp. Yeah. How many more episodes have you to finish? <laughs> the vlogs are a year behind at this, this moment. <laughs> yeah. What's that? That's Martellius, is it? Or? You need, yeah, yeah, that's Martellius. There's traction brackets for you. Do yeah. a beautiful job, all wrapped up, ready to go. But it's the last part of your puzzle. I'm very excited. It's nice to finally come down here. I've wanted to come here for so many years. Well, a lot longer, like, just to actually see the place. But yeah. it's quite out of the way for us. Call, I've been to a point where, like, I see a message from Neil of his. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Yeah, he's just a fucking time waster. Another <laughs> yeah. one. What's this? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Attractive old ones. Is this your starlet? That's my starlet, yeah. What year is she? 92? 92. She's spotless. One liter. Cleanest starlet I've ever seen. Do you bring it to shows? I do, yeah. I go on the Indian channel note tomorrow morning. There's a show Shame tomorrow. Shame Ben Cock. It's very, very nice. Yeah, I got spray that like. Yeah, I was wondering, did you get a respray on it? I did last year, I did. Jesus. Spotless. Ah uh, yeah, the red doesn't hold its... No, no, no. The van is starting to fade behind yeah. it. Yeah, starting to fade. Long people, I went to myself. Oh, do you, yeah? It's 01. That's the best smart way to go. Yeah, she'll go the forever. The old ones, but no one to keep top down there. Yeah. yeah. The old ones, yeah. She'll go forever. They would, yeah. Yeah. She looks well with the red painted bumpers. Oh, yeah. And the chrome grill. Yeah. How long do you have this? I have five years nearly. And they will let me down. Never. They'll never let you down, sure. That thing will run forever. Yeah. Look at this gear knob. It's very cool. Where'd you get, Where'd you get the gear knob? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> inside, inside another car. It was in another years car? Ago. Years ago. Years ago? Wow. Yeah. I have another Japanese car, was it? Look at that. Wow. That's mental. It's like just someone lying down holding their teeth, man. Wow. That is the coolest Yeah, it's after you blowing my mind a bit. I've ever seen. Just in the daily driver, no? Yeah, just the weekend. All right, then. i got to wash my little water. Fucking, I don't half wash them, they don't. The colour is nice, nice when you see one. Good, yeah. good shiny red. Yeah. Hard to keep, but it looks well when it's you know, clean. You know that? I, 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 I didn't compound it. No? No. no. That way, when a man spread that like it, then he could do Fuck. Some job. Some fucking job. So the new lacquer he put on now shouldn't really fade, really? I do, yeah. Shouldn't fade for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right, boys. No doubt. 
Right. You Toyota man. Yeah, yeah, for Toyotas. Right. Yeah. It's very nice. Thank you for showing yeah. us. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks for showing us. You're welcome. Thank you. Right. Let's go. One of the final pieces of the exterior puzzle for you. Yeah, BN Sports rear bumper. Very, very nice. Very snazzy. Great. Very good. A good off. day. This has been a great day. Enjoy your bump up. Thank you Enjoy very your much. And, and uh, thanks for holding we'll see you on. soon. <laughs> Enjoy the soccer match. See you, see you later. later. Thank you.